Hello everyone, welcome to Worship Media. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet Earth. I welcome you to this very special edition of our atonement on this very day, the ninth day in the month of October, in the year of our most high Elohim 2019. The time now is precisely a minute past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. And I presume the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, wherever you are domiciled. I welcome you and I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Because unlike any other broadcasting platform out of Africa, Radio Biafra, and especially this very broadcast this evening, is being listened to across the entire 24 time zones of the world and in over 100 countries on this very earth ipob family members have congregated around their listening devices to participate and partake in the blessing that will flow from this very temple this evening because chikukika biama that we worship the most high Elohim Adonai El Shaddai, the beginning and the end, as the Greeks who say, the Alpha and the Omega, the author and the finisher of our faith. On this very day, this very special day, we dedicate all that we are unto thee and seek your forgiveness that we may become pure before thy sight that we may be cleansed out of the abundance of thy grace and above all that your will may be done upon our lives i welcome you and as i do so i will encourage you to welcome other people as well because this evening we shall praise elohim we shall seek and ask for forgiveness and it shall be granted because there is only one creator not two not three not four but only one and that is chukukika biyama purumi henine there is nothing that man is capable of conceiving in his mind that is beyond the reach of elohim and tonight, this very evening, it could be morning, it could be afternoon, it could be evening where you are, we reaffirm that. My name is Inam Dekan. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. And by the very special grace of the creator and the owner of the universe, I shall remain a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. If you do not have your Torah with you, or the Bible as the case may be, if you are of the latter European persuasion, I will encourage you to get one this evening. Those of you who are keen students of Radio Biafra, then they bring your pen and your paper with you. Because tonight, as we did many years ago in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, to be precise, we shall endeavor to do this evening, which is to pray to Chukukika Biyama to dedicate this very fight and this very noble effort into his care and to make sure that we keep sight of that very ultimate glory which is the promise of a liberated and a fully sovereign Biafran state. All the things that we have been able to do, all the things that we are now doing, and all the things that we are likely to do in the future, 
Only two quickie car biama can make that possible and not man. Only two quickie car biama can and not man. That is why we must always pray and that is why we must be not only of courage but of good conduct. That is why we must remain whiter than white and whiter than snow. That Elohim may always guide us in all our undertaking. There are those who are filled with ignorance. There are those who are incapable of understanding the spiritual dimension of this very movement. There are those who cannot comprehend the depth of spirituality involved in what we are doing. Perhaps after tonight's broadcast, they will begin to appreciate where we are coming from and why we have made the grace of the almighty god in heaven very central to what we are doing in ipob we begin tonight with the promise of chukukika biyama the almighty god in heaven elohim and as the saints would call him jehovah the same God of our ancestors, the same God that created Biafra, the same omnipotent that made it possible that this very generation will be saddened with the very burden of bringing light into the darkness that we have come to know as Africa. And as the Elohim said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that i will show you and i will make of you a great nation and i will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing and i will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you i will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed we represent this blessedness we represent this very promise, this very noble house of Biafra. That is why the zoo will fall, because they have risen against the righteous. That is why they are saddled with IDP camps all over the place. That is why banditry is ravaging them. That is why they have fallen prey to terrorism. That is why insurgency is consuming them, because they dare to rise against the anointed ones. Our proclamation is divine for anything that we utter on this hallowed platform will come to pass. It will come to pass because it is a promise. And this evening we remind you, Kukika Biyama in heaven, that he is a God of truth. His word is yea and amen. It never changes from generation to generation, though we may have brought the wrath of God upon ourselves because of our carelessness in our attitude, our sinful ways and our sinful nature. But this evening we ask for forgiveness and we do so publicly and without shame that the mercy of God may be upon this very noble family of IPUB, that he will imbue us with his grace and that Biafra may come in our time that his words may be fulfilled in the life of those that live it with a sense of purpose because we are dedicated we are committed that biafra must be restored not so that a new nation may be born in africa not only so that light may come where once there was darkness but that the will of the almighty may be fulfilled in the lives of those who without any equivocation believe in his redeeming grace that is why we are here this evening and that is why biafra will come under our watch gracious and sovereign father remembering your big story of redemption in times gone by is not only a great joy but a critical discipline for us 
for so many different narratives compete for our hearts. People say they will worship a tree. Some say they will kneel and bow before an idol. But as we said on this very radio, Biafra, the day that we started, April the 14th of 2012, we said we dedicate all that we are unto your hands, O Elohim, that you may guide us, that you may make freedom become a reality for this very generation. And you promised us that it will come. We will pay a very heavy price, but in the end, that Biafra will come. We have paid that price. We have continued to pay that very price. The enemies are not relenting. Darkness have persisted. But in your kindness, we are now beginning to see light. And that is why we are confident that you will not abandon us. Even in our shame and in our sins, O oh, Heavenly Father, you will not abandon your own because you are merciful and you are very kind. People want to worship what they feel like worshiping. We have come before thee because you existed before time came. Every other thing flowed from you. There is nothing that exists in this very universe without you authenticating it. You said, let there be light, and there was light. Because if man can be intelligent enough or discerning enough to question the essence of creation, they will know that we are not here out of some random sampling of faith. We exist because you decreed it, because you existed before time ever did. That is why this very noble family, IPOB, we will not bow before any idol, anything made by the hands of men. We will not bow before anything that is flesh. Because you said that those that must worship you must do so in truth and in spirit. You are not flesh. You are not human. You are the creator. You are God. You are Chukokikabiyama. And only did we bow before, and not to the children of men, nor a piece of wood carved out from a tree that is long dead. For so many different reasons, people do their heart's desires, their days and their energy and their resources are wasted pursuing falsehood. Every religion on this very earth recognizes only one supreme being. Every religion on this very earth recognizes that there is a creator. Once there is a belief, there is an acceptance that the universe did not just happen. It was planned, it was ordained, and it came into existence. And following that very simple doctrine of natural order, we know that only the your heavenly father is capable of creating something out of nothing that is why we pray for miracle all the time because only thee can conjure up light where once there was darkness remind us today of the main storyline which unfolds in your holy book in the torah that connects all the history of the world and reveals your generous heart and help us once again to find our place in this story of your people because many doubt they don't know where they come from the devil have permeated the minds of many that they begin to doubt your creation but we have never doubted that is why this very noble family this very ipob will usher in Biafra because we stand on the truth. And that truth is that there is no other God apart from thee. There is no other creator apart from the Elohim. Only you is worthy to be praised and no other.
Nihi nasi na nkomba nege remba ni yo ezi okukobo. People of different persuasions around the world, cultures and orientation. They bow before whatever suits them. As for us, we are the children of light. We are descended from your knowledge. We have come from your grace. That is why we are informed, and that is why in the ancient in the world, they bowed before thee and they called you to Biama. After you, there is nothing else. It's only you. The work is yours, There is no other God apart from thee. We reaffirm that this very day of atonement in praise and worship of your holy name that you may forgive us our sins and cleanse us. Help us to find our place in the history of mankind. When the British came, they said we had no history, but they destroyed our temple in Arochubu. The same people that destroyed our temple told us we had no history. They said we had no relatives. But when we opened the same Bible that they gave to us, lo and behold, in the book of Deuteronomy, in Leviticus, are all the ancient practices of our ancestors. The same things that we did. From circumcision, to marriage, to training of people in trade or craft. Everything is contained in your holy book. The same people they said have no history. You showed us your light and today we bask in it and in the knowledge that Biafra must come. It doesn't matter what the detractors do. It doesn't matter the lies that the devil tell. The truth is there. Eri is there. Umweri is there. Aguleri is there. Oweri is there. Arochuku is there as a perpetual reminder of your presence in the land of Biafra. No one can take that away from us. They can do everything else. They can twist history. They can turn everything upside down. But one thing is irreducible. That as long as the land of Eri remains in an Anambra state, as long as Sowere is there in Imo state, as long as Orochuku is there in Abia, your presence shall remain and your light must shine in the land of Biafra forever and ever. Because you are God. You are Elohim, and we shall worship thee. We praise you for making incredible promises to us, even in our disbelief. You said we are your children, and we shall find thee, and we have found you. And we will not worship any idol because everything that man creates has an expiry date everything made on this very earth has an expiry date one day it will die everything every structure made one day it will cease to exist but you shall remain forever and ever because you're god we praise you heavenly father from the beginning to the end, your story is a story of sovereign grace and that sovereignty Biafra must embrace. We praise thee, O heavenly Father, and we thank you for the promise of the land of Biafra. This is open and book of the from the Garden of Eden started and continued to the land of Israel to the land of Biafra, which for us is the culmination of a new heaven and a new earth. Because in Biafra is your creation complete. That is why Britain and some parts of the world are terrified about the coming of Biafra. They believe it will bring an end to human civilization the way we know it. They believe that the coming of Biafra will signal or herald the coming of the Messiah. If the affairs are justified, we do not know. But we know that they are misplaced. 
because Biafra is here to bring development, to bring peace and human advancement to the backward, hopeless, and irredeemable Africa. If it is your wish to bring mankind to an end through Biafra, you would have signaled it. But we have read the scriptures over and over again and nowhere within your words have we come across anything that says the world will come to an end because of Biafra. We will also pray this very evening for, to remove the veil of ignorance from the eyes of our people, that they may behold your truth and that that truth may set them free. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the promise of the seed of knowledge and understanding you have sowed in our lives. You created a great nation in Israel and with it the birthing of a Messiah that will come at your appointed time. But you also said to us, you promised that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. That serpent is ignorance that very serpent is what the feudal Fulani system of oligarchy represents. And you gave us a promise that we will crush it. And we shall do so because you do not lie. We Biafrans came into Africa to destroy the work of the devil. That is what we are doing. To destroy the work of the enemy and bring light where there is presently darkness we are counted righteous in your sight by faith we praise the your elohim for the everlasting gospel of your saving grace we thank thee for the blessing O heavenly father it has always been your plan to redeem a family from all families on this very earth. And that is what Biafra represents. Because when we pray and we call upon your holy name, we want people to appreciate that Biafra is not a physical pursuit. It is also spiritual. They must understand that. That Biafra is not like any other nation on this very earth. And it can never be it can never ever be all of history is bound up in your holy book with your commitment to redeem your people from every nation from every tribe from every people and every language we praise you for your magnanimous heart O oh heavenly father and measureless generosity we will always thank thee People do not understand. They say they have a way that they used to do things. And I say to them, If you keep doing the same evil thing over and over again, it becomes a tradition. It becomes your culture. It becomes your way of life. That thing could be a lie. That is why we have gone to the source to investigate and to come up with this very belief and assurance that what our what the ancients did what our ancestors did was correct before the temple in Arochu was corrupted by the jukun slave traders some of us must understand this very carefully our temple in Arochuku was exact replica of the temple of solomon and of Herod in Jerusalem. We had high priests that were sacrifices. People went to Arochuku on pilgrimage before due to the greed and avarice of man, 
our temple collapsed into immorality, greed, and unrighteousness, the same way that the temple in Jerusalem did. And out of anger, Chiku Kikabiyama destroyed it. The same way that Elohim used the Romans to teach the Israelites a lesson was how the British came and destroyed our temple in Arochuku. Exactly the same. Because when you're a blessed race as we are, when you go contrary to the will of the Almighty Creator, He doesn't spare you. That's exactly what we witnessed in Arochuku. And this evening we pray and ask that He will be able to forgive us our sins and allow us to do it in the land of the living for the sole purpose of re-establishing the inevitable fact that Biafra, just like Israel, is God's project on earth. We must understand that. We must understand that. Father, we thank you that you have made us to be characters in and carriers of your great story a great story of redemption. So let us live and let us love. In the name of Chukokika Biyama, we pray with gratitude and awe. He said, he said, he said, for those who do not know, that is very strong need because I'm going to pray the real prayer of atonement. This is just a preamble. But I want us to build a background so that we understand why we do what we do and where we are coming from. Because if you don't know where you're coming from, there is no way you can know where you're going to. And this evening we want to clear some misconceptions, some ignorance filled in windows about our belief, about the reason why we do what we do. Our enemies do not want us to discover who we are. And if you don't know where you, where you are, as I said earlier, where you're coming from, you'll be floundering all over the place. And I want us to lay a very solid foundation. And I must, I must place what I'm going to say in context. The foundational basis of my postulates this evening is very simple. And please write this down on a piece of paper. The people that make up Biafra, the people that make up Biafra are essentially, I repeat, three sets of people. Understand this very clearly, please, so you don't misunderstand it. The same way that the Israelites left Egypt and went into the land of Canaan, went into the land of Israel and found people there. The Jebusites were, were there. The Canaanites were there. The Amorites were there. The Hittites were there. The Philistines were there. Understand this very clearly, please, because there is a lot of confusion. Igbo land the way you see it. Biafra land the way you see it has never been homogeneous in history. People already existed in Biafra land before the pilgrims came. And the pilgrims came from two sides. One migration came from Egypt via Sudan, via Niger, via parts of Yoruba land into the land of Biafra. The second part came from place Kush, from Ethiopia, and kept coming all the way from Ethiopia, from Congo, from northern Cameroon into the land. Of Far region of Ethiopia, all the way to the land of Biafra, you will find them answering our name, Mundoka, and all the rest of it. I'll go do your research yourself. Try and do it yourself. You will understand precisely what I'm saying. I know that the criminals are trying to tamper with our connection will not succeed. They won't. 
furiously trying to bring us down, but they will not succeed because we are doing what is right. They don't want you to hear the truth. That is why they keep trying all the time. But the truth we must preach on this very platform and that very truth must prevail. Allow me to repeat. Biafra land, the entire Biafra land, everybody in Biafra land that you're seeing today came from three sources. Three. There are those called the ancients. Ndibo, they were in the land already. They were on the land, because I have to be grammatically correct. They were on the land before the pilgrims came from the holy land of Israel. The first wave came all the way from Egypt. They didn't enter the land of Israel. The second wave entered the land of Israel, the land of God itself and Ephraim in the northern part of Israel. And from there started their migration when the Assyrians struck. And they came all the way from Ethiopia and they settled in the land of Biafra. That is where some of us derive the texture and the tone of our skin from. Go across the length and breadth of coastal West Africa. You will see it is very, very clear. They are very, very dark skinned. And when they came, they met a group of people. The Igbo people, the originators who were there before they came. Part of which the remnants are in Guinea, the Bijango tribe, the Bijango people. Because the same way that we process palm oil in Biafra land is how they do it in Guinea, the Bijangos. You know palm oil? They're exactly the same way. And as the pilgrims were coming, those they found on the land kept going inside the mall. There were no wars to talk about. The same way that the Israelites had to fight the Canaanites when and walked around the wall of Jericho and it fell. They took city after city. Most people do not know that Jerusalem belonged to the Jebusites, but David took it from them as Elohim commanded. The same thing happened in the land of Biafra. And from Umweri and Aguleri you have today, the spread started of these pilgrims. Those that believe in the irreducibility of the Almighty the omnipotent and omnipresent Chukukikabiyama in heaven from this to spread. And some people may say, oh, but it is not possible. How is that possible? But we have Ubugad today in Aguleri. It exists. We have Ubugad in Aguleri. The same God that is the seventh son of Jacob in the Bible they say, oh no, but it's not possible. How can this be? And I ask them a very simple question. Which other people on this earth circumcise on the eighth day of the week? Why must it be the eighth day of the week? Why the male child? Which people on this earth go through your Bible? Um, let me say the Torah, the Old Testament. Go through it very carefully. Which other people revere their first sons? like the Igbos do, or as Biafrans do. I don't know the Israelites. Which people can go out and marry a white, which other tribe or which other group, which other clan or nation can go out where a woman can go and marry another woman so that they, she, she can produce or provide hairs for the, for the husband. The same thing that we do in our land is what obtains in the old scriptures, what happened in Israel in the ancient times. Is it just a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I'm asking people. No one can answer that. God had three children, three sons, Ari, Arodi, and Areli. Listen very carefully, please, because I want to give the background before I go to my main prayer this evening. These things were mentioned in the book of Genesis. And if you go to the book of Genesis, I allow you to do that very research yourself. You will see that God, the, Zef, the seventh son of Jacob, had sons, Ari, Arod, Areli. The same spelling, E-R-I, Ari. 
The same spelling you have in Anambra State, E R I Omu Eri, which means the children or descendants of Eri. And also Aguleri, it is there. Eri, the same E R I. No change. There is Arodi. The same thing with Arochuku. The same thing, no difference. Arrow, the same arrow is here. And uh, really, they are the ones that father the clans. That is why you have uh, uh, Umuleri. You have, no, Umuleri, not Umuleri. Umuleri, Aguleri, Oweeri. And many other areas that you have all over Biafra land. Ibo land to be precise. People do not do any research because they don't teach you history in schools. The British, when they came, saw our culture. I'm talking about British white missionaries. They were the ones that told our ancestors, our fathers, that you have the same culture as the Jews. The same. When the Portuguese, the, the, the Portuguese merchants were coming, and they came to Biafra land in a place called Boni, or they named it Boni. Some of you don't know the meaning of the word Boni. It means beautiful people. Beautiful people. It was a Jewish seller that actually recognized that these are the, that the practices of these people is exactly the same thing that they do. And he named them beautiful people. Some say that the name Biafra is from left, right, uh, heaven knows where, from the Portuguese. I say that they are mad because they have not read history. They have not researched geography. Our name evolved to Biafra. Evolution. It was called Biafra. Go and look at the maps. B-I-A-F-A-R, Biafra. To reflect the migration from the Afar region of Ethiopia. <coughs> It became Biafra. If you remove the B, I exactly the name of the village where I come from, Afara. Go and check the maps, they are all there. Before it was shortened to Biafra. And this very kingdom stretched all the way from Ethiopia to our land today. That is why in some maps, that the some of the Alamajiris were banding about all over the place. They tell, oh, but can't you see Biafra is in the Cameroon? Can't you see Biafra is in is is, is near near Bruno? Now they all they are trying to do is to trace the route of the migration from Ethiopia. Eri the same, Arodi the same as Arochubu, Are the same way that you have over all these things are there. That we don't read, we don't research, we don't ask questions, nothing. Let me also um, say this because I am under divine instruction. I must speak the truth. It doesn't matter who feels bad or who feels good. I'll tell you this. Do you know when Moshe, that is Moses, went up the Sinai to go and bring down the Ten Commandments? Some people molded a calf, a golden calf, an idol, and started worshiping it saying that Moses was wasting too much time. And when Moses came out of anger, he dropped the tablets of the Ten Commandments. And all those involved were put to death in that. That didn't serve them as any warning. When even they got, when even Elohim took them into the land of Israel, those in the north, the northern kingdom, after the death of Solomon, decided on themselves to go and mold graven image. Against the instructions from heaven, that thou shalt not make anything by hand and bow before that very thing. Somebody will go into the forest in, in our village and cut down the tree and chisel away something that looks like um like an cap and say this is people are so daft. But because the likes of Hezekiah Jeremiah did not allow that 
impunity to continue. They said, no, this is the scripture. It says there is no other God apart from the one that you cannot see, the Almighty in heaven. Imagine some of you don't understand that the only gripe that Islam has against Judaism is the fact that despite all the blessings of God, that Jews molded idol and worshipped it. Go and read the Quran, it's there. That's their hatred. How can God give you everything? After giving you everything, you abandoned it, you went and molded idol again to worship. Because some of you don't read. You don't read. I'm talking about the Jews of the old, not the present one. That's the reason why. So because in your village they molded an idol, we heard your Obafo after many years or Obafo it is no longer Odenala or Omenala. That was exactly what happened to us, and people became confused. I don't know who Elohim is. But I was very glad when I went to Hafia before my house was invaded, 2017. If you listen to, for those that believe in, in tradition, if you listen to the lyrics of bend the war dance or half your war dance the first thing they say when they come is to call chuku okike abiyama no matter the type of idol you have in your village there is one okaka that is one that is above all chinkuku the highest of them all everything else is idol but because you were doing it for years, it became your tradition. Mm. It's just like anybody coming to the zoo, you would think that a politician stealing and killing people who are protesting is how politics is meant to be, but it's not. But if you allow it to continue, people will assume that that is how things are done. So we should not confuse ourselves. If we go into battle with the zoo by placing any idol, I'm, I'm warning you tonight, if you place any idol, anything made by hand, man or woman, man, come on, I'm on, the one that came from woman's womb, anything you present that is an, a shape, a form, an idol before us as we go into this very battle, Biafra will not come. We will lose it. Because that is not the purpose for which Chukukika Biyama sent us to West Africa. No. Not to worship idol. But to do that which is right. To give him every adoration. Every adulation. I said every. He said I am jealous. You don't worship anything else. I made everything. Bring it to me. Do you know what the ancients used to do? The ancients said, I, I, I asked my father to tell me why my grandfather, who was the high priest in my village, why they preferred to go through lesser gods, which you can say is angel, the way we have angels today. They said it's because Chin Kuku is very, when he gets angry, he destroys everything. So we are afraid. When we sin, we look for all lesser gods to ask them, please, Amadio, please, uh, 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 this other one, please, go and beg the big one not to destroy us, please. Because they're afraid they've done something wrong. Go and ask. That's how all this nonsense came to our lives. Go and ask anybody. Say, you know, amen. And I asked somebody once, and I said to, to them, in every Igbo name lies a meaning. There is no Igbo name that doesn't have any meaning. It has, so there is something behind it. It has a meaning. Literal meaning, not just metaphorical, literal meaning. And I said to this very person, if you dispute this very fact that three people make up the present Biafra and the present Igbo you're seeing today, because everybody came from Igbo and everybody, Ibibio, Efik, is on everybody. Forget about that nonsense they came from Benin. It's all rubbish. Everybody knows that it's, wrong. it's nonsense anyway. We are all one. All one people. One people. 
who are these three people? And I asked the person, I said to him, there is a place called Agolo, Uzo Ibo, in Anambra State, which means this Agolo is located, the same way you have Agolori, listen very carefully, please. This Agolo, which means forest, this Agolo is located on the road or the path that leads to the settlement of the Igbos. And I asked this very person, who claims he's a professor, who named it? Who named it Because Igbos cannot name a road after a forest that leads to their places. It's not done. If you're living somewhere, say, in Mbise, you come from Ekuraz Mbise. You, you from Ekuraz Mbise, you need to travel outside your immediate village to see somebody from Abon Is that not correct? You, let's say you have explorers from Ekuraz trying to go to Abon Bise, they are the ones leaving their town to go and search for other people. If they go to Abo and they see somebody there, they will say this is the road that leads to Abo Mbise. They will not say this is the road that leads to Ekuraz Mbise. It doesn't make any sense. Because they are the ones that discovered those in, Abo, in Abon Bise. What I'm trying to say is that Igbos could not have named a place Agolo, Esiaga, it doesn't make sense. You as a foreigner will be the one to name it, to say, this is the road that leads to this place, that is the road that leads to that place. It's pure common sense. But it's lost on our people. You know, they don't, they don't teach them history in schools. They don't anymore because Al Majri took everything away. So people don't, they no longer understand how to reason properly. They don't know. They, they think sometimes that when we tell them the truth that you hate them or you're trying to ridicule whatever thing that it is that they're worshipping. Anybody can worship whatever they like. That is entirely their business. But the truth must be spoken. So at least you know. So at least we now have a clear conscience to say that we preach this very gospel and they heard it. That is how it is. It's as simple as that. In Aguleri, you have a king in Aguleri. It's called is it Chukwemeka Eri. The 33rd. Or is it 30, sorry, 34th? If I'm not mistaken. 34th. He's an old, he's a, I won't say he's an old man as such, but by virtue of his um of the throne he sits upon, he's an he's an old man. A wise old man. So you're telling me that for 34 generations, they have been following a lie, 34 generations. You're telling me that the name Omu Eri, which means literally speaking, the children of Eri, that is meaningless. So that somebody from Omu Eri doesn't know himself, any, they don't know where they come from. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? I doubt that very much. You know, when the British came and and uh, forged a coin, you know, the penny in those days with the Star of David on it, nobody bothered to ask, uh, why would Britain put the Star of David on a coin in backward Africa? No one bothered. But we know that they found the Star of David in the land of Biafra through archaeological digs. I have said this before, allow me to repeat, because our people don't understand it. You know, they, they have this, uh, what I call the big brother brain. They have finished watching this year's episode, they're waiting for the, the one for next year to start. They've learned something from, no, they've learned nothing from this year, but they're hoping that the next year's one, they might learn something from it. That's how daft they are. They don't learn anything at all. They believe in three years things that have no value nor substance. We are their friends. How many of you have been to the temple in Arochuku before to know if it actually exists or not? Biblical temple where they call the name of Chukugigabiyama in our land for thousands of years. How many of you have been to Udi before in Enugu to go and see the dwarf pyramid? And I ask you, the only place you can find pyramid in Africa is in Egypt. 
What is the pyramid doing in Biafra land? Who built those pyramids? Simple questions you can't ask. Is what al majri tells you, or what a Yoruba Muslim tells you on Facebook, you'll be running about with. Because they don't want you to know, as Nihane Gosima, they go say one you can introduce my relative to me, not my friends. No, you can't. They don't want you to identify or to relate with Israel. They don't want you to. Because they know it's to your advantage. So they ridicule you. They try to make fun of you. So you will know where you come from. But Emperor Haile Selassie, the ruling family, the Menelik family in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, are they afraid or, or, or ashamed of their link to the Queen of Sheba? That went to seek King Solomon. Do you see how foolish? And look at us and look at Ethiopia with very proud history and heritage. So you are now going to tell me that Menelik and all the kings of Ethiopia, all the work to Emperor Haile Selassie, that they don't know what they are doing. They are, they are all joking, they are all liars, they are all confused and brainwashed. Is that what you are telling me? They are proud of their heritage. But us, we are so stupid and because we have no media, that we've allowed ourselves to be brainwashed into thinking that our own way of life, what we are doing, is somehow to be laughed at and something to be ashamed of. We should be ashamed of ourselves. And that is all, why I'm also praying this evening for Chukwoki Kabiyama to forgive us our stupidity and our hopelessness. What I'm telling you is the truth. Go and research it from top to bottom. You will come back and you tell me that it is the truth. Is anybody in doubt that Eri is our ancestor? Is anybody in doubt that Anambra is the first child of Biafra? Is anyone in doubt that we all come from Anambra state? Is anyone doubting that? Is there any doubt anywhere I'm asking? We'll give you proof and we'll show it to you. The same way that the Israelites congregated, it was the wall of Jericho fell and the land of Canaan. From there, they started to disperse to many places. Some went to the north, to the east, to even across the Jordan Valley. That's how it's done. It's called migration. A bit of rudimentary geography should have done some of you a, a world of good. Israelites and Biafrans are brothers. But when the foreigners say they are Arab, they speak Arab, they pray in Arabic, nobody complains. You see how stupid we are? They pray in Arabic. They want to be like Arabs. You know, they want to be Arabs. No one complains. It's their heritage. Even Balatinubu, well, is a want to be Arab. They pray in Arabic. All Muslims in the zoo pray in Arabic. They don't even understand it. Somebody will just be reciting uh, Arabic, uh, and that's it. And then they'll ask the man, um, what did you say? The man will say, go and bomb somebody, go and kill somebody somewhere. They just run off and kill somebody. They don't understand Arabic. I was, at, yeah, I was in the SS with some of them. They don't understand Arabic. But that's what they pray. The they, they God they, they worship, they worship in Arabic, in a language they don't understand. And they're the ones telling you that, oh no, leave it, this uh, is your Jew thing, this is where you're calling. But you are the ones praying in Arabic. You are the ones traveling to Mecca every year. You are the ones desperately trying to, to identify with the Arabs. You're not ashamed of yourself. It is me that can prove my link to Israel, that I should be ashamed. Do you see how twisted people are in the zoo? We are praying, is our atonement prayer, that we must lay some, some foundation before we pray it. Throughout history, large populations of dispersed Israelites, we are lost. Even in Afghanistan, can you believe? In Afghanistan, in the Pashtun region of Afghanistan, there is a lost tribe of Israel there. Who are you to question God in heaven? How he does things. There is a lost tribe of Israel in Zambia. I'm sure you know about the ones in Eritrea and in Ethiopia as well. Are you aware there is a lost tribe of Israel in Sudan? Some of you don't know this, but we are here to teach you and to tell you.
and when but but uh, abakiari and erufai can sit in abuja and say that every fulani in africa is their brother and should come to the zoo so they can give them land in the middle belt and none of you said anything but when we try to establish our link and relationship with israel you're up in arms that tells you all that you need to know about some of our people it is the truth and i must preach it if you have a counter to present it there is always a saying in our place which i i, I referenced a few broadcasts ago go and bring out the the idol from your village and i'll tell you the tree it was cut from and that tree is dead and then you're telling me that the arrow is alive this is how foolish we are i don't want to delve too much into that let's continue there is evidence that is scientific that we have evolved over the years so not everybody i said there are three people that make up the people of biafra not everybody came from Israel. Not everybody. The Igbo, the, the Igbo people, the Asians, they were on the ground. The only thing is that there was integration. Intermarriages and diffusion of cultures and values. That's what happened. We should be able to read history, please. Very, very critical. Very, very important. We are now going to pray because um, we understand what it means to worship Elohim. As I said before, our fathers went into battle and said in the name of whatever they believed in, they shall conquer. And we say in the name of Chukuki Kabiyama, we shall conquer. And we'll see those who will be successful. That is where I hinge everything that we're doing. We shall see those who are going to be successful. Those that believe in Chuko Kabiyama, that this is a divine project from heaven. Or those that follow the gods that were given to them. Because nobody gave mankind God in heaven. Because he always existed. Some of you should delve into astrophysics. And go and watch or study the history of the universe. Do you know that universe came from nothing? Do you know? They call it the Big Bang. And I kept asking scientists, what was there before the Big Bang? What bang did to start with? They could they kept say, they want to say it is, it is Elohim. They don't want to say it is God. What was that thing from the... They said, uh, and suddenly there was this massive expansion of, of, um, of matter and the time and whatever, and it exploded, the Big Bang. <laughs> And I said to them, you can't create nothing out of, uh, something out of nothing. What was responsible? Who ignited the, who lit the fuse before the Big Bang went? They can't explain. And they, they, they say they're scientists, they cannot say it is God. Because if they say it's God, I mean, it's uh, who's paid to everything they've been studying and, and you know, uh, everything that they believe in. Now you understand it? Because that is where it says in the book of Genesis, it said, let there be light and there was light. And the scientists agree that the Big Bang, of course it was light. To give you an understanding of why we worship Elohim and no other. To give you a tiny understanding as to why we worship this Elohim in heaven. Do you know the sun that we see every morning that wakes us up, that, you know, fuel, fuels our crops that, you know, we eat to stay alive? Sun, the sun, Anya one that you see every morning. There are, there are more suns in the universe than the grains of sand on the beaches all over the, this very planet Earth. If you go to the beach and you keep scooping up bucket load after bucket load of sand, every if every one tiny grain one single grain of sand represents a sun you have more suns in the universe than every grain of sand on every beach on this earth that is how mighty god is that's how mighty he is and from here our own solar system the sun that you see i think we are the third planet from the sun isn't it 
Yes, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and then Mars. Yes, we are the third. The nearest sun, something similar to what we have. I think it is in a place called the Alpha Centauri or whatever it's called. If you start going there today by the fastest vehicle we have on this earth, which is a rocket, it will take you 85,000 years to get there. 85,000 years to get to the nearest sun. And they are saying that, that the amount of suns that you have in the universe is more than the grains of sand you have on every beach in the world. Every single, imagine that one tiny grain of sand represents one sun. Now you understand it? And then I will leave the person that not, is not a person. I will leave the phenomenon that created all of that to go into a forest and cut down a wood and start talking rubbish. Do you understand what I'm saying? I will leave the person that made it possible. That is why they said it's life, that is world without end. If you start traveling to the end of the earth, you can never get there. You will never get there. Even if you live forever, you can never reach the, the frontiers of the universe. And you want me to live what made that very thing, this huge thing, this mind-blowing phenomenon, to go into a forest and I'll pick out one tiny tree, I'll cut it, I'll carve it, and then I'll start sacrificing chicken and goat to it. Oh dear me. We must pray. Because Chukwu Kikabi and I said we must do so. And that's exactly what we are going to do. And it is the prayer of our atonement this very day. I believe that I've been able to give some kind of context to this whole debate as to why we must have atonement. Some of you don't understand it. But we are here to put you straight. Oh Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands. We have sinned and done wrong before thee. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our rulers and our fathers and to all the people of the world. Lord Elohim, you are righteous. But this day we are covered with shame. The men of the land of Biafra, and the people that you have put in it, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us, because of our unfaithfulness to you, we are suffering because we sinned and rebelled against you. That is why Flan is in our land. There is no other reason why people who are not educated will be lording it over your children that you have blessed immensely. There is no reason why somebody without a certificate, with a forged affidavit, should be presiding over the lives of those who are doctors and professors and professionals in every endeavor that mankind can think of. That is the worst type of punishment, and you're doing it to us because we rebelled against thee, because we are sinful. That is why you have scattered us all over the world. We are slaves in Libya being sold as commodities. Everywhere in the Sahel of Africa, your children are being toyed about with. In Saudi Arabia and the Arabian lands, oh Heavenly Father, they kill us at will. We are a toy for them. And when we survive that, we drown in the Mediterranean. When we are not drowning in the Mediterranean, oh Heavenly Father, we are being herded like sheep and cattle into prisons and detention centers all over the world. That is the fate of a people that have sinned against thee. 
And this evening, on this very atonement day, we ask thee for forgiveness. Oh, Heavenly Father, have mercy upon your children. We have sinned against thee. Please forgive us. Forgive us. Because you are righteous and we are covered with shame. You have scattered us all over the world because of our unfaithfulness to you. Please gather us back now, we pray thee. Oh Lord, we and all our rulers, we are covered with shame because we have sinned against thee. The Lord our God is merciful, Jukukikabiyama, and he is forgiven. Even though we have rebelled against him, even though we have not obeyed the Lord our God, or kept the laws that he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All your children in Biafra land have transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the laws of your son Moshe have been poured out against your children because we have sinned against you you have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers and our elders by bringing up our children great disaster there is no worse disaster than nigeria under the whole heaven nothing has ever been done like what is being done to biafra land today just as it is written in the laws all these disasters have come upon us yet some of us are reticent we have not sought the favor of the lord our god by turning away from our sins and giving attention to the truth you did not hesitate O oh heavenly father to bring this disaster upon your children for you are the lord our god you are righteousness in everything that you do but we have not obeyed you now, O oh Lord, our God, who brought our ancestors from Egypt and the land of Israel with a mighty hand and who made for himself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned, we have done wrong. O oh Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger and your wrath from the land of Biafra. Rebuild Biafra, we beseech thee. Our sins and iniquities of our fathers have made Biafra and the people in it an object of scorn to all those around us. That is why those we are better than are today laughing at us. They are taunting us with something as ridiculous as presidency. Because we abandoned us, oh Heavenly Father. Please have mercy. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petition of your servant. For your sake, O oh Heavenly Father, look with favor on this very desolate Biafra. Give ear, O oh Heavenly Father, and open our eyes, O oh Lord, to see the desolation of our cities that bear your name. Because our tongue still this very day still answer Umuchuku because we are your children. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Oh Heavenly Father, listen. Oh Lord, forgive us. Oh Lord, hear and act. For your sake, oh my God, do not delay because your nation of Biafra and your people we bear your name we thank you our Lord and our God and the God of our ancestors that you forgive us our sins pardon all our iniquities and grant atonement for all our transgressions through your mercy for it is written if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just. You will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
and as it was forecast by Jeremiah, our land has become desolate and an astonishment because we have served the kings and the gods of other nations. And we pray thee, O Heavenly Father, for your mercy to be upon us, that your will may be done upon our lives. And tonight I say to be our friends all over the world, turn now each of you from your evil ways and your evil practices and you can stay in the land that the Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever and ever. Do not follow other gods to serve and worship them. Do not arouse my anger with what your hands have done. Then I will not harm you, says the Lord of hosts. But as usual, we have not listened declares the Lord, and you have aroused my anger. What your hands have made and what you have brought upon yourselves. Therefore, the Lord has said this, because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the people of the north. Isn't it very strange? Evil always comes from the north. The same way that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, descended upon Israel from the north, so have fallen the caliphate. And their jihadi partners descended upon the land of Biafra from the north. Some may see it as a coincidence, but I do not. And Elohim has brought this hand of wickedness and evil upon the blessed land of Biafra. And the warning remains there that Biafra will be destroyed and we will be banished from our land unless we turn our wicked ways around and seek the mercy of the Lord God Almighty. We do not want Biafra land to become a wasteland, nor to become desolate, but for the fulfillment of the promise of Elohim upon our lives. Today, we live in other parts of the world where we celebrate New Year Festival. But I have one thing to remind all those who are engaged in these shameless acts. Because whilst Israelites were taken into captivity in Babylon, they had the decency and the common sense to remember that they cannot sing the Lord's song in a strange land. We cannot have New Year Festival in a land that is alien to ours. We cannot celebrate New Year Festival when our land is burning and lies desolate, destroyed, not just by the anger of Elohim, but by those he has used to accomplish it. That was why they sang that by the waters of Babylon, they had sat down and wept when they remembered whom. All those of you celebrating New Year Festival, you must remember who and weep for Biafra. That is why you cannot sing the lost song. You cannot celebrate something that is as sacred as New Year Festival in another man's land. And on that very note, we bring tonight's prayers to a conclusion and pray to the Almighty to forgive us our sins, to be merciful upon your children, O Lord, that your mercy and your grace may dwell upon our lives and that the promise of Biafra may be fulfilled in our time to the eternal exaltation and glory of your holy name, now and forevermore we have prayed. He said, he said, he said, thank you for listening. And from me, from here, it is good night.